What's up? Oh, it's dark. All right, let's do this right. What's up designers? Welcome back to the channel. It's Jimmy and today I'm gonna be showing you guys how I designed my umbrella lamp or as some people are calling it, my mushroom lamp. Let's do this. Goodness gracious. I respect all YouTubers that try to shoot their content outdoors because there's so much distraction from leaf blowers to construction. I have to take this moment to be brutally honest with you guys. Without Thangs.com sponsoring these videos, I probably wouldn't have made these videos showing you guys how I design my fan concept, my toaster concept. I also allow you guys to download my 3D SolidWorks files so you guys can see exactly everything I did in order to build these concepts. Please go to Thangs.com, the link should be down below. Clicking it and registering and you'll be able to download my 3D models for absolutely no cost. You could also check out Thangs.com's all of their 3D models. They have a ton. You can download them for no cost and use them in your own projects. Thank you to Thangs.com for sponsoring this video. So in this video guys, I'm going to be showing you how I designed another very iconic product, which is my lamp concept. I'm going to walk you guys through the ideation phase to the 3D phase. And this time, since you guys have been asking how I render my 3D files, I'm going to go ahead and show you how I render in Keyshot as well. So if you guys appreciate what I do here, how I design from the sketching phase all the way to the CAD phase and even into the rendering phase, please go ahead and smash that like button. It'll really help me out for the YouTube algorithm. Actually, I'm gonna cut the montage here and talk to you guys a little bit about industrial design sketching. So when you go online, you've probably seen a lot of beautiful sketches on Behance or Instagram, and you probably hope that one day you would be able to sketch just as good as them, right? And when you look at my sketches here, they're not what you would consider the traditional sense of a beautiful industrial design sketch. And the reason is because honestly, guys, I'm not here to impress you guys with how good I can sketch. Can I sketch? Absolutely, I can. But for industrial design sketching, guys, what I try to teach to my students is I'm spending all of my brain power trying to come up with different ideas for my lamp. How could it possibly look like? How could it possibly work? What are some of the configurations and the mechanical mechanisms I can use? All design sketching is, is a tool to help you visualize your ideas in a fast and quick way. Generally, sketches like these are kept to myself and I don't really show anybody them other than you guys who I'm trying to teach. And I find myself at Target once again doing some research, checking out some of the lamps that they have. So when I was taking a look at these lamps, I came up with three different factors that really make up the essence of a lamp. The first thing is obviously going to be the light source. The second thing will be some type of an articulation. And the third thing is an on and off switch. These three key features are what I will be primarily focusing on for my own concept. As for articulation, I actually didn't like the ones that lock into place because it required two hands. This one here has actually a very tight tolerance, so all I have to do is move it with one hand and it stays in that exact position. This is something that I certainly want to use for my own concept. As for the lampshade, I would really like it to be very soft, light, and diffused, kind of like what this bear would be, but with a more softer fabric-y material like a traditional shade lamp. As some of you guys may know, I'm very much into camera gear, and when I was looking at some lights for photography, I noticed that they use this umbrella 
setup where the umbrella can fold up very compactly but when you open it up and shine a light through it since the umbrella is white it really softens and diffuses the light quite nicely since the umbrella mount also has a hinge photographers can adjust the light in the direction that they wish this is primarily the inspiration that I took in order to design my own lamp concept. Alright designers, so we made it to the second phase of our industrial design process which is the 3D catting phase. So I built this in SolidWorks, our favorite 3D program, and it took me about four to five hours to build this thing, so not too bad. I'm gonna briefly walk through with you guys how I built this in SolidWorks, but if you do wanna see exactly every single dimension, every single sketch I did in order to build this, definitely click the link down below to thangs.com. First, you'll need to register, and then you could also download my lamp, as well as my toaster and my fan 3D file. I'm gonna upload the step file to these 3D as well, so if you don't have SolidWorks, you can also view my 3D files in any 3D viewing program. So the first thing I did here, guys, was I ended up just blocking things out because I wasn't quite sure how this thing was going to come together. First, I built out the base, which is about 10 inches in circumference. And I also built out the stand and then the transition zone where I imagined the lamp would hinge from. So I continued by blocking out the top part of the stand and the beginnings of the light bulb mount. But the interesting part is going to be this horizontal section here. I do have a parting line that runs right in that horizontal section and that's where I imagine the stand will be able to bend so that you can kind of direct the light where you want it to be so it kind of looks something like this which will be the more of the rear view but I imagine that most people would like it to look something like this which is actually looking at the diffused lampshade so I went to go ahead and build out that lampshade next so it took me a couple of tries to tweak the lampshade but overall I'm pretty happy with this shape and the proportion of it so what I did was I ended up rebuilding the stand, making it a little bit more refined, and how I was able to do that was using a swept feature just like that. I also built out the second layer of the base. Not only will this lamp be able to swivel at the hinge, but then it'll also be able to rotate around the base as well, so you could kind of swing it around to the direction that you would like. I also built out some of the inner structure of the lamp shade, so that the lampshade has actually something to connect to the stand later on as I continue developing it. The three main key features of a lamp is really the light source will be my lampshade here. It'll be some kind of an articulating mechanism to give it some functionality, which will be this hinge part that I've been telling you guys about and also the swivel part down at the base. The last thing would be the on and off switch. So the on and off switch, I didn't want to just make it boring, like maybe an inline in the power cable. I wanted it to actually have some kind of an iconic visual feature to it. Kind of like a focal point of my industrial design if I had it somewhere around here where the interesting part of my design is, which is kind of like this bend kink part. And so I kind of wanted the knob to also live around that area too. And I think it's actually giving my lamp design a lot of character. And if we take a look at my final rendering here, I'm actually very happy how it turned out. It's just not only does the lamp shade have a very large heavy visual weight to it but this knob here also has a very memorable looking industrial design so the next thing I went ahead and did was really focus a lot on the transition point between where these two bars meet. I wanted it to have a little bit of beef to it so that the user could kind of get a sense of security that this thing is not going to break on them. I imagine that the light bulb is not going to be seen too much during my rendering, so I'm not going to spend too much time detailing it out. All I really did here was create a sphere, which is what I'm going to be adding the light to. Then I also created this uh, cup that holds the light bulb and then I also 
added a very cool detail here to my knob again since I want the knob to be a big focal point. It's gonna be this kind of like ring pattern that's cut off at the bottom. This is a shape that I often use in my designs. During the rendering phase, I'm gonna add my logo right in the center. Circle with the cut off at the bottom and then my logo right in the middle, giving my concepts a similar theme from product to product. So the next thing I'm gonna do is try to figure out how to connect my lamp shade to the stand itself because right now it's kind of just floating. And how I was able to do that is earlier you guys saw me build out some of the structure of the lamp shade and then I'm gonna have the bars run and connect to the inner ring as well as this bottom ring. It's like these very simple bars that go into these little transition parts here which also live in this metal ring. I ended up building out the cable with the swept feature. The lamp will be able to swivel around but if it does swivel around it's gonna run into the cable so what I wanted to do was cut out this long slot so that it would be able to swivel around without having to run into the cable and that is pretty much it guys I am fairly happy with it it's simple but it has some very nice little details which really bring the concept to life these are the things that make people fall in love with your designs All right, designers, we finally made it to the third phase of our industrial design process. Since you guys have been asking me how I render my 3D models in Keyshot, I'm gonna show you how I do that. Before we actually get started, first I wanna say I think we are making history here, guys. I don't think there's another industrial designer on YouTube that has taken you through the full industrial design process, sketching to research to design thinking to 3D modeling in SolidWorks and now rendering in Keyshot all in one video oh my goodness gracious guys I hope you appreciate what I do here it's been quite a lot of work trying to create this video so please help me out by going down hitting that thumbs up button and so when we first start off rendering in Keyshot we need a 3d model so if you have one that you built yourself go ahead and use it if not please go ahead and try to download my 3d models that I have provided the link is gonna be right in the description below this video go ahead and click on the things.com link it'll take us to things.com if you don't have an account yet first you'll need to be able to register then you can find my page. If you can't find my page, click on the link once again once you've made the account. If you haven't seen my fan video or my toaster video yet, go ahead and watch those after this one. So I have uploaded two different copies. This one here is going to be the SolidWorks and this one is going to be the step file. Step file is a lot more simplified. There's no history of me building it. So this here is going to be the SolidWorks and then this is going to be my step file. So since I've already shown you guys how I built this in SolidWorks, we're only gonna need the step file. So I'm gonna go ahead and download the step file right here. So I'm gonna scroll down and click on the big yellow download button. So now what I'm gonna do is launch Keyshot and show you guys what I have going on so far. We're gonna start over, I'm gonna import it again and show you guys how I did it. First, you're gonna notice though that it's more than just my product rendering. I've also created a scene. There's a backdrop, there's a table that the lamp is sitting on. So these are gonna be extra things that you guys can also add in. And if you need 3D models, Thangs.com also has a ton of 3D models that you can download from and use them in your own projects. So go ahead and check out things.com library and see the things that they got so that maybe you can use them in your own projects. So let's go ahead and get started with a brand new scene. So I'm just gonna start from the very beginning. First, this is gonna be kind of like the default of Keyshot if you guys haven't seen it yet. It's a fairly simple program to use. What I'm gonna do is import my 3D model which we've downloaded earlier. So I'll go to file import. Select the 3D model that I downloaded and I'm going to increase the tessellations all the way up and hit import. And this is what it looks like. So of course it's just going to be completely gray and it's currently using the default studios. First thing I'm going to go ahead and change the environment. So what I'm going to do is go over to the left and select uh, the three panel one. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and it switches it up to the right over here. And then what I'm gonna also do is switch the background color to white and turn off shadows. 
So that's usually the first thing I do in order to set up my scene. So it only really focuses on the product itself. So the next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and start adding some materials to this. So all of our materials is going to be under the material tab right here to the left and down below is going to be some of the different materials. So I'm in my metal tab and I'm going to go ahead and select this nice brass polish right here. All I have to do is click and hold drag it on over and add it on to my part. So you guys noticed that the material added on to my whole lamp and obviously I don't want the whole lamp to be the same material. So what you gotta do is over here under our scene, we're gonna go to our models and right under the models folder, we're gonna see my main model right here. We go ahead and click the plus button you're going to see all the different parts that I did in SolidWorks. And so we can add a material within each one of these parts. So first, what we have to do is right click on the very top one, go to materials and click on unlink materials. What that will do is pretty much split up all the different parts. So now when I try to add a material onto each part, it will allow me to do that. Obviously, I'm not going to spend too much time on this. If you are working on your own projects, I would spend way more time. But for now, I'm just going to start adding in materials. I went ahead and searched up a frost material and add it to the shade. And so far, that's actually looking pretty nice. I'm liking this color combination. I think that this brass material looks a little bit too yellow. So what you do is you double click on it. You switch it to color right here. And then I'm going to go ahead and change it to like a more of a yellowy kind of a color. So that's looking good. Okay. So the color only changed on the base because that's where I double clicked. So what you should do is if you want to add it to all of these other parts, you hold down shift, you left click, and then you go to the part that you want to add the material to and you right click. And there it added to my other stand part here. I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing here and to my knob as well. Cool. So I think it's looking a little bit too orange now that I look at it. I'm going to go ahead and rotate the lighting because it's a little bit too bright for me right now. So that looks pretty good right there. So that's how you do is you do the rotation under the environment tab. I'm going to go ahead and double click on the color now and then I'm going to change it a little bit brighter actually. Something like that. Okay. So it, once you add in kind of like a chrome material, it always looks very, very perfect. Almost a little too perfect to where it just kind of looks computery. So what I'm also going to do is double click on the material, go over to textures, add in some sort of a bump. So let's go ahead and click on the bump, do this drop down menu, and I'm going to go ahead and select uh, noise texture. And so there I went ahead and added in this bump right here, giving it some realism because every material always has some sort of a micro texture to it. And now and change the scale. It's currently set at 0.3. I'm going to go ahead and set it to 0.01 and that's looking a lot better. So now the texture of it is very, very small. You can barely see it, but you can now definitely tell that there's some sort of an imperfection to it. I definitely don't want this cable to be a brass material. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and search soft and it's gonna bring up some of the softer materials. I'll probably use this gray color right here and there is my cable. The cable is looking a little bit too dark. I kind of want to look a little bit more white. So I double click on it go to this gray color here and switch it up to a little bit brighter. So the next thing I'm going to do is focus on the shade. But before I actually do that, I want to add light in because the light is going to affect the look of the shade. So right now it's set to that metal brass material, which I added in earlier and go into the light. This warm emissive light is usually pretty good. So I'm going to go and select that and drop it in there. So now we have our light shining through right there. So I'm going to go ahead and double click the shade material and change the color to something a little bit more yellow. Something like that looks pretty good. The materials of these are probably not going to be as nice as this bar probably. So I'm going to go ahead and change it to a slightly different color. And I'm going to add that to these three bars just like that. And then these transition points, I am imagining they're probably going to be some sort of a darker material. So I'm going to go ahead and change those materials just like that, add them in. And then let's go ahead now and focus on this ring. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna go right click, unlink material, double click it, change the color. 
Okay, cool. So then now let's go ahead and add in my logo. So this knob here, I synced it with these materials, the stand materials. So I don't want to add the label onto those as well. So right click on it and then click unlink material. Then again, double click on the knob and go to the label tab on the right. And right here is gonna be a little plus button. Go ahead and click that and click add label to texture. So I'm gonna go ahead now and select my logo and it's gonna drop in just like that, but it's a little bit too large. So to the right here, I'm gonna uncheck DPI for size and change it to about 0.5 inches. Boom, that's looking pretty good. Translate it by making sure that the translate is selected here and I'm gonna move it into position. Looking good and then click the check. So back to the right, once you scroll down just a little bit, blend with color. If this is not showing up for you, go ahead and double click on the knob again. Go to the labels, scroll down, and then you'll find blend with color. Go ahead and select that, and that will change up the color of my logo. I'm just gonna go ahead and change it again, make it a little bit brighter. I don't want it to be pitch black. So it's looking pretty good, but if we rotate it a bit, it looks kind of just like a 2D graphic texture that's right on my knob. And so I kind of want to give it a little bit more depth. So what I'm going to do is scroll up just a bit, and we can see that my label is now in the diffuse channel. So if you hold Alt, click on the diffuse, and then drag it over to my bump, and drop it in there. So now that my logo's in my bump channel, it kinda added a little bit of a raise to my logo. Actually, I think that the knob here is a little too rough. So I actually wanna make it a little bit shinier. So what I'm gonna do is double click on the knob, go down to textures and actually change the bump height to 0 0.01. Let's see what that looks like. 0 0.02. It's looking a lot better. So this will really start to differentiate this knob here with the main stand. I kind of want it to just look a little bit more shiny, a little bit more polished. And if you guys noticed too, I actually did create a transition point between the knob and the stand, which is going to be right here, which I can tell that it is a brass material still. So again, what I'm going to do is right click on it, do unlink material. I'll take the material off of these little transition areas, hold shift, right click and then left click on the material that you wanna apply it to. So now we can tell there's an extra little tiny part that is a transition from the main metal stand to my knob. And so just little stuff like that, again guys, add to the realism of your rendering. So this is actually looking pretty decent. Honestly guys though, I would spend a lot more time rendering this, making sure everything looks nice. But overall, that is the gist of how I render in Keyshot. And once you guys download other 3D models off things.com, you could import them and start building out your scene, maybe like an interior of a home or a living room. So once you're ready to render, what you'll do is set it to the angle which you want it to render. So let's say I want it to render more something like this change the brightness which will be in our environment tab i'll reduce the brightness right here down to 0.8 oh i forgot to add in some of the dark base as well so i'm going to copy this darker material and add it into the base i'm actually going to add some noise to it so i'm going to double click it and make sure to add some noise so 0.5 something like that okay so this angle is looking pretty good to me the next thing you do is you hit the render button you set your folder to where you want it to render. You set the form out of it. So I like PNG. If you click the include alpha channel, which is a transparency, it will render without any background to it, which is good if you want to add a background in Photoshop later on. And then of course you set the resolution to what you would like. The larger you do, the longer render time it would be. As far as quality goes, we'll take a look at the left here, which is under the options tab and we can then change our samples. So I usually like to crank it up to like 500 because I notice that that's pretty much the best quality I can get, but it really depends on your computer. And then all you have to do is hit render and it will begin rendering my scene. Ooh -wee. Designers, that's all I gotta say. Ooh -wee. That was so much work, it was insane. Probably the most in-depth video I've made yet and so I took you guys through the sketching phase, research, 3D modeling in SolidWorks and rendering in Keyshot. Not only that but I talked to you guys about what I think about when I am coming up with these designs packaging it all in a nice presented video and at the same time having to design a product as well 
Oh my goodness, that was craziness. But I really, really hope you guys learned and enjoyed this video. If you did, definitely show me some appreciation by hitting that thumbs up button, leaving me a comment down below, and also smashing that subscribe button. And of course, I gotta say a huge thanks to Thanks.com for providing us such an amazing platform for me to share all my 3D models with you guys. And not only that, but for sponsoring this video as well, because honestly, guys, I probably wouldn't have made these videos if they weren't sponsoring. So please, please, please go down into the description, hit the link, register and download my 3D models for no cost. Thank you to thanks.com for sponsoring this video. What I really hope for you to do is to learn from my process, see the things that I do, implement them into your own process to improve your own skills. At the end of the day, that's really what matters to me. All right, guys, that is about it for me. My name is Jimmy Design, and I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.